Hi everyone, welcome to another episode or another show of the Spinners Lounge. And as always, we've got another guest and we're in another place. And before I get started, I'm going to let my guest introduce himself, please. Thanks very much. My name is Neil Neil, uh, North London based DJ. I specialise in soul, funk, jazz, um, and soulful house. I think it's fair to say that. That's cool. Um, with like with the Spinners Lounge, especially these early shows and stuff, it's been about. I put an ad, and lots of people got involved, and uh, they started applying. And Neil was one of the first in the first group of people that applied. And when we chatted, we had a, quite a good chat on the phone. Yeah, I told you about the idea and stuff. So. You know, when you said um, also you're on the radio station as well, so that was quite interesting because obviously it's going to be the first DJ that I've had anyway that's been on the radio. So with the Spinners Lounge, yeah, we always have like a set of questions that we go through, okay. which is kind of generally to understand a little bit more about you. Yeah. Yeah? Right. But with this time, because we're at the radio station right now, we are, yeah. Right. I thought we could maybe start off with talking a little bit about you being on the radio and yeah, being, no a ra- being a radio DJ. So what's the name of the station, this station? That the we name of the station is Climax Radio. Um, we're based okay. in well, where we are now at the moment, which is Tottenham Hale. OK. OK. Um, my show goes out each and every Monday night, 9 till 11, mm-hmm. and um, it's called Funk Avenue. Um, funk as a generic term rather than mm. the whole show being about funk, basically. OK. Um, we try to put a mix into there. There is some funk, soul, jazz, uh, house... Um, slow jams, new jams. Um, we try to cover the whole spectrum, basically, giving you know, um, uh, an eclectic mix, basically. Almost like a jamboree bag. There'll be something in there for everyone, basically. So uh, that's that's about the show, and um, say every Monday night. Okay. So is that generally what the radio station is about, or do you do other kind of music? Or it's, the radio station is right across the board. It's very diverse. Okay. Um, they do they do grime, uh, grunge, um, Afrobeats. Um, okay. There's talk shows. There's even a, a doctor who's um, yeah. well, a doctor yeah. in the house basically, yeah. <laughs> who's yeah. on one of the shows as yeah. well. Basically, so yeah, it's right across the board on okay. what they do here. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So in terms of like, how long have you been at the radio station? I've been at the radio station now three months. Um, I was on the, uh, prior to this another internet station that um, closed down but is now reopened again. Um, uh, the show has evolved and has changed basically um, to, to where it is now. Um, as I say, we try and give you know a bit of an eclectic mix, make the music interesting, slightly different, and it is stuff from back in the day. I want people to think oh my god I haven't heard that in ages I've been texting their friends saying have you heard that track mm. it's a new track or it's an old track we haven't heard for a long time basically so that's, that's where we're at and what it's about oh, cool so we've um, so prior to being on this radio station was there any other stations you were on before or no there wasn't I mean I'd, I'd always been interested in radio um, it, it's a different medium from doing clubs Parties, um, you, you, you've got to, you, your personality can come through. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're doing a mix, then you know you're doing a mix and you try to express yourself via the mix. But it's quite pure. Um, it's 100. percent You're behind the microphone. You're trying to entertain somebody you know is out there, but they're not quite in front of you, basically. So um, it's a hard medium. Um, it's the music and the talk and the chat that does that. that, that, that that's what, where it's about, and you know that's what does the work for it, basically. Yeah, well, um, we'll give the links to his radio show after, definitely. Lad. That definitely, I uh, do like listening to you on a Monday night. I have to tell the truth, but um, what did that kind of attract? What kind of attracted you to come and say, right, I want to take up radio rather than maybe just maybe play out or as a person? It's, it's the difference on it because I mean, if you're playing out, um, there is to a certain extent a set formula you've got. Um, now there is a set formula to the show, or one I try to put in. Um, we, we start with the big beat, so. The first or three songs will be something big and, and, and meaty and bouncy. Um, and we sort of slow it down. It's this light and shade. We'll slow it down and then pick it back up again, basically, as well. Now, whereas you, you can never do the, the playlist that you have for the show, really, if you were playing in a club, because it just wouldn't work. So what attracted me was you were able to give um, a, a bit of a different feel mm. to the music and what you're doing on, on, on a show, basically, as well. And, also, of course, add your inputs, um, you know, with your personality mm. as well, you know, the, and give, you know, um, not a musical lesson, but, you know, uh, just some information about the, the song, the artist, when it came out. Mm. And, um, you know, just uh, it, say it's an education, but it's good music, as simple as that. 
Okay, so in terms of like the things you do as well, obviously, do you have a normal job or is DJing your main thing? No, it's not my main field. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. I'm not a superstar DJ. Um, okay. Well, not yet anyway, but uh, no. Main job is freelance sales, basically, is what okay. I do. Um, so um, doing working freelance affords me a certain amount of time for uh, a. I was going to say hobby. I think it's more, like more of an extended hobby now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because the reason I asked that was kind of how do you find the balance between obviously doing the present, uh, presenting on the radio and the music and then obviously having a sort of normal life with a normal job as well? For me, that's fine. Because, I mean, you know, as I say, work freelance. Um, you do mm. go into, I do go into about, can be two or three different, you know, sort of companies throughout the week. Mm. And to certain extent, I spread the word within these companies as well, basically. Mm. Um it, it can be hard. I mean, I've got family life as well. Um, it's you know, I'd hear to you know, sort of quite, quite strictly as well. But um, it, 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 it's it's a love and a passion. If you've got that love and the passion, you you'll make time for it. You want to do it as well. Um, you know, for, for me, it's no bother coming down from this part of North London to to going home as well, basically. So uh, it, it's it's spreading the word. It's it's, it's playing the music. It's um, you know, doing what you love and doing what you've got a passion for as well. Uh, music it is about passion, passion, yeah. enthusiasm. You know, that's it. You have to have those things, you know, obviously to kind of progress and do the things you want to do. Right, so let's go back now and let's talk about the DJ inside of it. Like, with you, obviously, is radio all you do? No, radio's not all I do. Um, I do do the radio show, um, again, which is uh, one of my favourite things to do, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, I do clubs, bars... um, I've done weddings this this month as well. It's been right across the board, basically. Okay. Um, But it, 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 it... Radio is probably my number one. Okay. So after that, it's, it's doing the clubs, basically. Um, you get the reaction, the feedback from the crowd. Yeah, yeah. You have to play yeah. for the crowd as well, so yeah. it's an instant thing. Yeah. You can change it, swap it, switch it. Um, so, yeah, um, not just not just the radio. Um, it's the full kick of boodle, basically. <laughs> no, cool. So do you regularly play out, then? Do you, or... Yes, I do. I regularly play out. I mean, I've got a residency, um, okay. which is uh, in, in central London. Um, but then in, in addition to that, mm. um, there's been various other things I've been asked to do. Um, for example, I'm doing the Brighton Festival this coming Saturday. Yeah. Um, so I'll be playing on the beach um, for. Um, uh, I've got two sets lined up for that as well. Basically. Okay. So um, cool. It's, that's one of the great things about being a DJ. Um, mm. You don't limit yourself to one thing. It can be a warehouse one week, beach the next. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's, it's, that, so, uh, yeah it's a good gig if you can get there. It absolutely of, is. You know, it's nice to know, you know, when they come through, through thinking, "Oh, fantastic, you're doing this," and um, also. Um, it affords a little bit of travel. I mean, um, I don't just stick to London home counties. Um, I've got a car, so I do go further afield as well. So uh, uh, okay. you get to meet a few, uh, a few, <laughs> a few northern people <laughs> outside of Luton and London. So uh, yeah, um, uh, it's, it's it's good. I enjoy it. All right, now cool. So with the DJing, let's go back and maybe talk about when it started and what kind of inspired you to get into into the DJing and what you know, take it on further these many years or whatever. Yeah, it can. I mean, you know, uh, the, the music that I don't remember playing now, I mean, it's, it's, it is a big mix. Mm. But then my musical background, musical heritage is a big mix. Uh, my father listened to Ray Charles um, and Della Fitzgerald. My mum was listening to Jim Reeves. Had older sisters were listening to Motown. My younger sisters were listening to the, the Teeny Bop. Mm. Um, Soul exploded in 74. I was listening to that. Um, Brit Funk came out in about 1981. So it's all those elements that have come into being, basically, that's um, it has influenced mm. what I want to listen to, what I want to play. In terms of the you know, musical journey, um, I got up to about where about Rave cut off, basically, which was in the mid-90s, and I started going mm. back, mm. look at the 60s, and seeing what was there, what was soul like, what was funk like. Mm. Uh, so it's just encompassing all those um, elements into when you're playing out or on the radio show as well, basically. So that, that's the background, that's the heritage. Okay. So then at what point after obviously having these kind of influences did you then take up the the actual DJ element of it? That was, in the, early, that was in the early 80s, where again, when the explosion of, you know, the, the Brit Funk was out as well and the, the Jazz Funk clubs, there are loads of clubs around. Yeah. Absolutely loads of clubs. I mean, when I compare it now, um, mm. you know, especially in when I, the area where I live in Harrow, mm, mm. if I'm driving through Harrow now, mm. I can point out where they were because they've now closed down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's unfortunate really it right is, now. It, abso- it yeah. absolutely is, because I mean, you know, we used to be out literally uh, more or less seven days a week. I think it was Wednesday, it was the only night we couldn't really find anywhere to go to okay. or play. Um, so uh, it, 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 was, it was a great time. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of great music. Um, the acts are accessible as well, because the, the guys in, in, in the sort of the British bands, like High Tension, um, mm. Central Line, they're accessible as well. Mm. You went to a club, you know, they, they'd be mingling with you and dancing with you and talking with you and chatting with you as well. 
Um, they had the All Dayers. Um, they also had the, um, uh, the Soul Weekenders. Um, you know, the Casters, etc. Um, so it was, like, it, was, it was a great time for music. Um, a huge explosion, and uh, it's really um, influenced you know where we are today as well. Okay, so with that kind of time and stuff, you know, lots, well, lots of stuff going on. What kind of DJs did you then look up to, or did they inspire you to think, all right, you know what, I'm, you know, taking on board my music taste. I want to bring a bit of new to the world. So, kind of, there must be some DJs at that time, early days, that kind of inspired. Shall I tell you, there's too, too many to mention. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to mention them though. <laughs> oh, no, please do, please do, please do. Please I mean, having do. said that, I mean, you know, they, they, there's a group called what well, they call the Mafia Jocks, which are like Chris Hill, uh, George Power, Froggy, um, Sean French. They were the, the, the main guys that used to do the, the jazz funk clubs and the jazz funk circuit, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, going further from that, uh, and a lot of pirate stations around the time, like Invictus. Uh, Robbie Vincent was a huge influence on me as well. Um, and also um, Greg Edwards, um, another one who you know sort of played back in the day, and um, you know even going on to onto a reggae vibe, you know David Rodigan, I mean, mm. you know, still around, still playing. Yeah, Roddy's um, still there, yeah, still there, still going strong, still going um, strong. I think he used to have a residency in Gossips in um, in Dean Street. Um, used to go up there. So okay. it's all those DJs um, that were around at the time and um, they're playing. They are the ones who influenced me. If you're talking about modern day ones, um, mm. it's got to be Charles Peterson. Um, okay, yeah, Charles. I mean, guys, yeah, incredible, cool. especially with his you know mm. his labels. Um, Craig Charles, um, he does a funk show on Radio 2, which again mm. is, is fantastic. And um, also from that... Uh... Right, Neil, so we were talking about um, the DJs, obviously, inspired you. You said Roddy Gurn, Giles Peterson, house DJs, obviously, and then the connection, how did you get into the house music? What was the connection there? The house music, I mean, um, it, it's really soulful house, and it stemmed from there, basically. I mean, I always look at soulful house as being the, the little brother of just funk basically but it, yeah, it, 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 you know it, it, mm. it, the, the style of the music mm. is very very similar you know to what we were now sort of grooving to and listening to back in the day basically in terms of the influence of the guys of uh, CJ Carlos Paul Oakenfold and uh, there's a guy called Jar Big I mean he's an incredible mixes basically uh, I think he's Canada based uh, but those are the guys again that um, got me really into, into house yeah. started off in their soulful house and have just gone from there to you know, looking at deep house and just the variations of that as well what I would really like to do is when you, when you have this sort of soulful house and mix it, you know, with a few of the old jazz funk classics in there as well, basically. Um, goes down a storm, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, when we first talked, he talked about being in a group with two other friends and yeah, I, I, was it a sound you had? Kind it was of, a sound, yeah. We yeah kind of explain <laughs> a little bit about the sound because obviously that's the time obviously your DJing developed obviously. That's exactly, exactly where it started. Um, mm. we, were called, we were called Central Sounds and there was myself and two other guys. Um, mm. Ket Shah, another guy called Hitesh. Ket um, mm. has stayed with the DJing and uh, doing very well at the moment basically with it as well. Um, we had all the equipment. The equipment was very expensive very bulky and very labour intensive. Um, had a residency in a, um, one of the pubs in um, Hammersmith and we used to do a lot of the parties as well and a couple of the clubs and bars around the area. The problem we had, it was um, a bit like a, um, I suppose a boy band basically, we had musical differences. <laughs> I liked to play one style of music, mm. Ken liked to play another. Mm. And Tesh, he kept his bottom eye really on, on the profits. Um, <laughs> wasn't too worried about the profits at the time, but mm. anyway. Um, the other thing as well was um, as the equipment became more and more, um, getting to a gig, you need about three cars to get to a gig, records, loading. Um, so it, 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 we did well up for mm. about the first two and a half years, but as it got bigger, we sort of shrunk down and stopped basically. Okay. And uh, I think it's musical differences that uh, really did for us. So, uh, yeah. And what, what, what time was that? That was the early 80s, 82, early 80s. going through to about 86. Uh, so it was about four years span. Okay. And uh, as I say, um, uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> an interesting time I've got to say well, basically well, pitching, pitching, up, pitching up to a party in three cars offloading taking about an hour and then setting up and playing for about three hours so when you said you had equipment obviously you had decks speakers so you had everything you wanted Mainly wants the Dexter so speakers. how did it work what you just bought the whole equipment to the club for the first time okay absolutely and you even as a house wow. party I mean we used to just go mob handed basically okay. <laughs> with our crew there used to be more of a crew than there were sort of guests at the party mm. sometimes basically okay. but um, 
again, I mean, you know, um, um, the speakers were pretty powerful, so the, uh, the so cutlery it, and the uh, <laughs> the windows, the ornaments used to rattle <laughs> a little bit, basically. But, um, so you did that for roughly about four years? About four years, yeah. Okay. So what happened, is, obviously, the difference you said is that's why you kind of split up then, yeah? Yeah, there's a reason why we split up. I mean, you know, from there on in, um, I think we're not separate ways. I say Kit did his thing and I yeah. did my thing as well, basically. But the good thing was, I mean, you know, um, it was going then into, um, I suppose, bar and club lands. They had their mm. own PA systems, so it was easy to do. So you, you know, rock up with a crate of uh, vinyl. Yeah, uh, and, play, yeah and start playing, playing, basically, on cool. better equipment than the ones that we had. So the experience... Which, was always breaking yeah. down as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was going to say, right, just kind of obviously uh, touching on the, the, the sound, was that your first sort of venture now as a sort of a DJ being professional? Going absolutely, out absolutely it was. And, um, you know, um, it, it, it's... Playing vinyl, which I still do now, it's, it's quite theatrical. I mean, you, you take the vinyl out and you, you always show up there, <laughs> put it on the deck, spin it around. So it's quite a theatrical thing to do um, and being, you know, a bit of a natural show-off. I quite enjoy doing that, <laughs> as I do do now as well, when I still, you know, play mm. out and play vinyl, basically. So, uh, cool. so yeah. after the sound sort of... Um you know, broke up or whatever. What was the next step for you as a DJ? What next step, you... it was really doing bars. Then the uh, rave scene came in, so it was back to doing warehouses, fields, and that sort of stuff as well. After the rave, it sort of slowed, and so I sort of stopped uh, a little bit and just just took stock uh, for about 10 years and then came back into it, which is where I am now, basically. So, okay. um, so what made you, after your sort of little break, yeah. your 10-year break, what then made you decide to take it up again? The thing I've decided is just a change in technology. Um, mm. I've seen, well, you know, these guys were, you know, sort of making great music. They made them in their bedroom, or they do it on <laughs> YouTube. I'm thinking, well, well, let me explore this a bit more, mm. and I did, and um, that's where, where we are today. The, the, the technology behind it, when I was, you know, we just spoke about, you know, rocking mm. up to a party with three three cars and a yeah. band or whatever. Mm. Now, I mean, you know, um, you literally, um, I saw this program on this uh, USB uh, stick, yeah. He, he, he was, mm. he, he just held up this little USB stick to the crowd and they were going wild um, and he, he played out of that basically. So, technology has shrunk it down um, so it's been good. So, I thought to myself, well, have I got anything to offer? And uh, yes, I have. Okay, so, we've taken sort of the technology side and then seen all the changes in it. Um, how do you feel about it personally? Like, do you think it's a good thing? Like, do you feel more connected? In terms of being a DJ who's doing, like, you know, these different things now, do you find that there is more out there to connect you to the fans, whereas back in the day when you first started at Central Sounds, you couldn't give out, you couldn't go and press 100 tapes to give them <laughs> free to people because it would cost you a lot of money. But whereas now, you can put stuff on Mixcloud, Soundcloud, you can burn CDs, it doesn't cost an arm and leg. So do you feel technology as a DJ and maybe as a person the level you are has helped you connect more with people as well well I think it has because it's now out there in this instance um, mm. you know you, you, you can tweet a mix and, and it's out there in, you know in, in in, in, in Cyberland and somebody's been listening to it whereas before you couldn't as you say with the chrome tape you'd give the chrome tape to someone you'd hope they'd get it back or when they're <laughs> after they'd sort of taped on it basically I think both have their own merits I think to a certain extent with technology it's a little bit insular and what I mean by that is if you're out there, if you have got a sound system, which I'm not so sure many people do have now, but at least you're in front of people, you can gauge, gauge the reaction. So you might know what works, you might know what doesn't work, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you're just you're firing off a mix, now your friends might think it's absolutely fantastic, um, but you know um, it's out there in cyberspace. But having said that, um, with a lot of these things like Mixcloud and Soundcloud, you do get um, feedback from them, basically. Mm. So uh, both have got their own merits, but um, no, I'm, gl I'm glad I am where I am today, basically. Cool. Cool. No, that is. That's, um, that's good. But so now, still sticking on technology, and then your first decks. What was your first decks that you My had? first decks, which I saved up for my Technics T mm. T12s, basically, okay. um, which I still have and they're still maintained. Mm. I still get them serviced. Um, mm. They're still at home and I still use them. I still do some gigs in them as well. Mm. Um, the good thing about you, you say, if you do a gig, with um, your decks or with vinyl, um, to a certain extent, you can, you can actually charge more for it because it's, it's mm. now, believe it or not, looked on as a special event. And they will bill it as oh, a vinyl event, all oh, Neil Neil's coming down with his decks, etc., mm. etc. Whereas back in the day, it was standing. <laughs> it's now something to be you know, revered. And um, uh, you know, like a lot of places do um, mm. what they call an like, open mic where you can get on and just mm. play 10 records yourself, basically. So uh, yeah, um, still have them, still play. That's how I learned how to mix as well. Um, which is basically the old way. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was the, the old, old way. way. Yeah, the old, yeah, way. The, old know, way. Um, the one thing I say about houses: houses is, is is geared up for mixing. 
You mm. get the beat at the beginning and the beat at the end. Yeah. Whereas before, um, it, was, uh, it, it wasn't. I mean, you know, it was real musicians. They mm. might, might play to a syncopated beat, yeah. but it was never true. Um, and never true to the next one. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, it was a... a it was a learning curve, but I think it's, it's, it's a bit like, um, you know, if, if, you, if you learn to drive, you can drive any car. And if you mm. learn to mix on decks, you can more or less mix uh, yeah. on anywhere. Or anywhere. I think it's the principle of the theory. Isn't it? Absolutely, it, yeah. Yeah, definitely that um, you have to, uh, well, you get from when you mix on vinyl. So what, do you, what else do you mix on? Do you have CDJs at home as well? I've got CDJs, um, which I play on there as a Pioneers. Um, I mix on them as well. I mean, they've been industry standard, so it's been one to the other, basically. Mm. Decks to CDJs and now to digital, basically, MP3s. Um, so, uh, yeah. It's been there. Whatever's going to be next, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. But then again, I mean, you know, um, we've, we've, we've done, done gigs where it's been a, a mixture of the three, um, yeah. where it's been, there has been the decks, it's been the MP3 off the, off the laptop, and it's yeah. obviously been the CDJs as well. So we try and. Circumstances, yeah, everything yeah, changes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And we're going to sort of be finishing off right as well, um, and we're going to stick to that kind of technology. Um, in terms of your mixes, where do you normally sort of distribute your mixes for people? Or, My mixes yeah. are on SoundCloud and on MixCloud as well. And um, those are the two main areas where they're on as well. Uh, I've got a Google Plus account and all the shows loaded up onto there. The shows are all loaded up onto MixCloud and SoundCloud as well, basically. So um, they're out there. Um, mm. They're listened to. Um, they're enjoyed. People uh, uh, you know, write comments on it as well, basically. Mm. Um, had none derogatory so far, <laughs> which hopefully is a good thing. No well. trawlers, that's well, good. Exactly, that's exactly. Good, that's exactly. Good, that's you never good. know. So um, yeah, um, as I say, you know, that's that's a good thing about it. It, it. Your music is out there, and it's out there pretty, you know, PDQ and uh, uh, doing good things basically. Oh, cool. And in terms of the radio station, is it is it uh, live on the internet? It's live on the internet, yes, okay. uh, through TuneIn, and there's various apps you can get it through as well. Okay, or, yeah. of course, through uh, climaxradio.net. Uh, and well, the reason I asked again about sort of uh, the fans of the radio station is, do you know, what's the furthest place that you've got a fan or someone listening from? Well, we've been from all over the place. Um, Israel, um, okay. the States, Brazil. Brazil's very big on, on funk, believe it or not. Okay. Um, um, most of Eastern Europe as well. Um, I think it's more deep techno house they're into there as well mm. but uh, yeah broadcast worldwide um, so uh, we, we, we're, we're far afield so we, we're spreading the word spreading the word mm. spreading the love and spreading the music worldwide basically <laughs> no that's good Neil right we're about to finish up Neil yeah obviously we're going to go you're going to go and do your mix for I'm us going to do a mix for you and uh, obviously we're at the radio station time's a little bit tight so we're just going to try and run but what we do with the end of spinners lounge is to kind of let people know where they can go Obviously, you've got Mixcloud, Soundcloud, so just tell them the the name of your accounts and then obviously the radio station time when they can come and listen. No problem. Take right. it away. All you need to do is go onto Google and type in DJ Neil Neil, and it's spent, spelt N-E-I-L-N-E-A-L-E. Or you can also go Climax Radio Neil Neil and uh, Soundcloud, Mixcloud's, um, your DJ accounts. Uh, we'll all be there. The shows will be on there. And if you want to listen into the show, 9 till 11 each Monday night. And that can be uh, gained through um, either TuneIn app or also via ClimaxRadio.net. That's it, folks. You've got it. And I do recommend that you go and listen to the show on a Monday night. He play, Like he said, he plays a mixture of house, funk, grooves that you probably remember and all that kind of stuff. So check it out. And this is me, Trudy, Spinners Lounge. Peace.